first. And I know that this did not copy well, so I'm so sorry. Let's go right here real fast. What I want you to do is give yourself a closed interval. So I'm just gonna kind of focus on that first um, quadrant. And I'm just gonna be like, oh, cute, there's my function. I'm gonna say this function goes from A to B. I just drew my function on a closed interval. And would you say my average rate of change is positive or negative from A to B? Positive. And again, that's called a secant line because it goes through the graph twice. And what the mean value theorem says, average value theorem just says, oh, okay, if this function, again, is continuous, so I never have to lift up my pen, and it's also differentiable, meaning I never have cusps or corners, there will be at least one other point that also has that same slope. So in this picture, if I were to have the same slope, wouldn't they be parallel? If I were to draw a line parallel, I'd say that that C value, there's gonna be some other X value that has the same slope as that average slope. And that's what this mean value theorem is. So let me say this one more time. Blue line is called a tangent line. They're saying the tangent line or the derivative is going to have the same slope. Or it's going to be parallel to the average slope. That's what the mean value theorem says. Cool. So we'll kind of dive into that a little bit. I do want to help you make sense of this graph over here. So this was supposed to be a nice curve. And again, I apologize about that crappy, um, the crappy <sighs> copy that you got. You guys, they went ahead and said from here to here is my average slope. They said the black line is my average slope because they're gonna just say that this is from A to B. And again, that mean value theorem, mean just means average. That value theorem just says that there's gonna be at least one other point that has that same slope. Over here, we had one tangent line that had that same slope. Do you agree here that the same slope, we could be parallel somewhere over here as well as somewhere over here? This one has two. So this one would be two, quote unquote, C values, if you will. C would be there and a C would be there. We've got two points that have the same slope because they'd be parallel as my average slope. Think. This is the formal definition of it. What is, for the mean value theorem to apply, if my function is blank at every point and blank? Yes, Ro? Differential. Yes? Differentiable. I'm going to put that here and I'll tell you in a second. What's the other one? Someone else? My function is L? continuous and differentiable. Let me talk to you about why I put those where. So it's saying, hey, we've got to be con co continuous everywhere on that interval, including the endpoints, including because those are bracketed. And then differentiable everywhere within those two endpoints. So notice continuous all the way to the ends, differentiable in the middle, if you will. Then they're saying the derivative, uh, let's actually put it in words first. The derivative will equal the average rate of change. And notice I'm just putting this on the left because I'm going to show it to you mathematically. Some people might like that or they might like average rate of change. That's the same as the slope of the secant line. Whichever one you like to write on this right-hand side, these mean the same thing. The average is just change in y over change in x. This is kind of it in words. How I'd say that derivative is saying f prime of c, I said, the derivative is going to equal the average rate of change. That's just slope, change in y over change in x. These things mean the same thing. This is the fancy notation of mean value theorem, and then this is the mean value theorem in words. Okay, my girl Elise, you're going to the beach, Elise. You live 150 miles from the beach. You leave your house at noon, you arrive at the beach at three. What is the average rate of change over distance traveled to miles per hour with respect to T in time? You guys, if she got there in three hours, how fast was she typically going? What was her average rate? 50 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour. And couldn't we technically, if we had to be all mathy, be like, okay, she started at zero, zero. We're going to say noon was zero and she was, had driven zero miles. And then after three hours, she had driven 150 miles. So if I did that average rate of change, we do y minus y over x minus x. Y'all are so smart that you just did that in your head and you said her average rate was 50 miles an hour. AP is totes down with you using MVT for mean value theorem instead of writing all that out. And what does the mean value theorem tell us about her trip? If her average 
rate was 50 miles an hour. The slope of this black line or this red line here was 50 miles an hour. If her function, if her driving was continuous and not differentiable, what does it tell you? At some point on her trip, she had to be doing what? Going 50 miles an hour. Just because her average was 50 miles an hour, that means, that mean value theorem means at some point she had to be going 50 miles an hour. So we could just say um, mean value theorem uh, tells us at least once, could have been more, but at least once, bless you, between 12 and 3. Elise was traveling exactly 50 miles per hour. Okay, um, what if I said, what could happen if the function is continuous? Do you agree this one's continuous? But not differentiable. Do you agree we got a cusp or a corner here? So the she, it could, the mean value theorem could still apply, but it doesn't have to. So here's a function. Do you agree that this function is what? This function is what, but not what? Yeah, thanks. It is continuous, but not differentiable. Is there a point? Um, C, is there an X value between zero and four? such that the derivative would equal the average rate of change. This is just my average rate of change from zero to four. You guys, let's go draw it. Bless you. That's just saying, boom. My average rate of change would be zero because it's horizontal, right? Hoy. Guys, does it look like there's another point that has the same slope? Yeah. Does it look like it'd be here? Those aren't parallel. What about over here? Can I have it right here? Why can I not? It's a cusp or a corner. We can't have a slope at a cusp or a corner. It's not differentiable there because it'd be like teeter-tottering, right? So we're going to say, is there a point? No, we're going to say no um, because my function, I just said f of x, is not differentiable on that interval a to b or from 0 to 4. Instead of saying a to b, I should be more specific from 0 to 4. The mean value theorem does not apply. Of mean value on this guy says, I am giving you a continuous function. And it's still not differentiable, just like my last graph. But there is a point that satisfies the derivative equals the average slope. So here's one that I thought of. Could we go like this? Cusp or corner. Is this still continuous? Yeah, and actually let me, how I drew this just to make this a little easier, I went like this and then like this. Yeah, I think that'll make your picture easier. Two loopity swoopities. Would you say it's continuous? Not differentiable. What would you say my average slope is? Positive or negative here? Positive. Would you say that there's another place that has that same slope? And another place maybe? On this one there could be two. So I'm just showing you some options. We don't even have to write anything out about it. But even though this wasn't differentiable, the mean value theorem could still apply. It just doesn't have to. So now this is how AP is going to ask this stuff. It says, hey, do you agree we've got this continuous function here? Woo! Continuous function. Graph has two, do, 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 do. Okay, find the average rate of change. Let's go get a point real fast from negative 4 to 3. Let's go find the average rate of change from negative 4 to 3. How would I find that average rate of change? What minus what over what minus what? Those points, even though I just drew over them, were negative 4, negative 1, and 3, negative 2. What would be my average rate of change? Negative 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 4? Did I do that wrong? Oh, it's negative 3. Thank you. So negative 3 there. So negative 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 4. Okay, great, great. Now I'm hearing people say negative 2 sevenths is my average rate of change. Would you say that my slope was always negative 2 sevenths? Isn't my slope here positive? 
and positive and positive. What about my slope here? At a, at a cusp or a corner, can I have a slope? Nope. What about my slope here at this vertical tangent? No, ma'am, can't have a slope there. So this function is not differentiable. I'd say it's not differentiable here and there, right? Because we got vertical tangents have undefined slopes and then cusps or corners. So it said, find the average rate of change. We just did that. We got a point. They said there is no point in C on that interval. There's no point, so there's no x value that they're calling C between negative 4 and 3 that the slope of the derivative is equal to negative 2 sevenths. Explain why this statement does not contradict the mean value theorem. For the mean value theorem to apply, this thing has to be continuous, which it is, and what? Is it? Nope. So we're going to say um, mean value theorem does not apply. And we just want to use what they gave us. What's the function called? Do we want to say, didn't they call it f? So we can say because f is not differentiable, on what window from what x to what x? I'm going to put just that window here like they gave us from negative 4 to 3. Maybe it would help yourself reminding yourself that there's a vertical tangent at x is negative 3 and a corner at x is 0. You don't have to give that info. But if you're like, man, I haven't talked about this in a while. I needed this for myself. That's good info to have. Let's go on to page three. And I gave us this big chart. It says, hey, is there a number C or an X value between negative five and three? So I gave you a huge chart, but isn't negative five there and negative three there? Just pointing that out. Such that the slope is negative four. Oh, I kind of left this out. Let g be a differentiable function. That was important that I didn't read out loud. Okay. Okay. You guys, between negative 5 and negative 3, is my slope going to have to equal 4 there? Let's go find my average slope there. Give you a lot of info. What do you think we'd need for my average slope first? Which points would I use? Yeah, negative 5, 10. And negative 3, 2 are just points on G. So what would be my average slope? What minus what over what minus what? Love it. 2 minus 10, I'm down with that. Over, beautiful. My average slope, negative 8 over 2. Hey, my average slope is negative 4. My average slope. Does my derivative also have to equal negative 4 at some point? And what we're going to say... If something is differentiable, if it has a slope at all points, does that mean it has to be continuous as well? If I tell you something's differentiable, it means that it's always continuous. There are no cusps or corners. So we're going to say, because G is differentiable, it is also continuous. And therefore, what applies? MVT, mean value theorem. Um, because G is differentiable, it is also continuous on that interval. Therefore, mean value theorem applies. And boop, there is at least one C on that interval that G prime. Is negative 4. Let a function whose derivative is this. We also know that the function has the points 1, 9, and 3, 11. And then they gave us the derivative. Okay. What is the value of x from 1 to 3? Notice 1 here matches this one, and 3 here matches this one satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem for f on the closed interval. So they're saying, let me remind you what the heck that mean value theorem is again. You don't have to write this down. But the average slope is going to equal the derivative at some x value. And for, they use c often. 
They're saying what value of x? They want us to solve for c here. Would my derivative equal the average rate of change? Well, if I gave you these two points, could we go find average rate of change? What's my average rate of change going to be? What minus what over what minus what? Is going to go on the top or the bottom? Top. E yeah, change of y over change in x. I'm going to go 11 minus 9 over 3 minus 1. What did y'all get? Over is perfect. That's my average rate of change. That's my average. They're saying, hey, for what x value will the derivative equal that? So what would I do to solve for this guy? I have the derivative. I have my f prime. I want to find my c or my x. And I need to see when it equals 1. So you guys, we can go ahead and say, all right, when does 3x squared minus 6 over x squared equal 1? That's my f prime equaling the average rate of change. Then we got to go do some algebra. What would I do first to start solving for x? Times x squared. Times x squared. Yet, when we multiply by x squared, I got a 3x squared minus 6 equals an x squared. Let's got my next step. Say that again, bud. Ah, uh, well, let's get my x's on one side. Subtract 3x squared. Oh, guys, subtract 3x squared. That would get me what, Mr. Jackson? That would give you negative 2x squared. You know it. Divided by negative 2. 3 is x squared. What's my answer going to be? Plus or minus root 3. Notice root 3 is an answer. Why isn't my negative root 3 an answer? Zero. Yeah, my x has to be bigger than 0. That's why we get to exclude the negative 1. Boom. Whoo! That's hard. That is hard. That's hard. Let's try 16, you guys. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try 16. So on 16, it says, hey, we got this function. The application of the mean value theorem guarantees the existence of a C value or an X between 1 and 3 such that the slope would be what? Whew. This is a lot. We got this, though. We can do this. The slope would be what? From 1 to 3. So don't forget, mean value theorem says, hey, F prime of C is going to be the same thing as F of B minus F of A all over b minus a because you guys even if we found f prime we don't know what we'd plug in there would we we don't know so could i do this side instead how could i go find what do you think my a and b are in this case yeah my 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 a and b are just my endpoints of my interval so my a is one my b is 3. How would I find, if x is 1, what its y-coordinate is? Plug it in. I love it. Plug in a 1. What's 2 times 1 cubed? 2 minus 4 is going to get me negative 2 plus 1. Negative 1. Plugging in a 3. Ooh, 3 cubed. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 8, so thank you. 27 times 2. Oh, and this is non-calc gross. 27 times 2 is 54. I'm going to write this down. Minus, if I plugged in a 3 here, 3 squared is minus, times 4. Yeah, minus 36, and then plus 1, gross. 54 minus 36. 18 plus 1. Great. That tells us we've got two points on my function. Bada bing, bada boom. Can I use those two points to find my average slope? Because that's going to be the same slope as my derivative at at least one point if, it, if we're applying that mean value theorem. Let's do it. Change of y over change in x. Row, row. Change of y over change in x. What you got? Oh, nice. Three minus one. Oop, thank you. 
what's my slope going to be? Yeah. So on this one, the derivative of the, uh, the derivative will be the same as average value. That's what the mean value theorem says. And we're saying that that slope would be 10. I think it's hard to know what they're asking for sometimes with mean value theorem though. Okay. So you guys, if we go back to 2003, y'all were not born yet correct? Y'all would be 20. Sheesh. Um, I was a freshman in college living my best life. Yeah. Uh, the function is continuous. Hey, this is continuous from negative two to one and differentiable. We need that. Okay. Okay. It gave us two points. Which of the following statements could be false? I kind of hate when they do that. Blech. Could be false. Hmm. So, there exists some x value between negative 2 and 1, so on the interval, such that the y value f of c has to be 0 for a candy. Does anyone remember what theorem that is? It's not mean value theorem because this isn't talking about slope. Oh, my gosh. Keelan for the win. Do you guys agree if my function had the point negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I plotted that. Oh, negative 2, negative 5. Get with the program. If it's got that point, and then 1, 4. At some point, does it have to cross through 0? At some point, if it's continuous. It could be there. It could be there. We don't know. It could be here. And Keelan said, hey, that's the intermediate value theorem. Gah. Just means, hey, if it was 19 degrees this morning and it's currently 21, woo, did it have to be 20 degrees at some point this morning? That's the intermediate value theorem. So that's what... Siri, try again. Siri, shh. That's what this guy is saying. There exists an x value between negative 2 and 1 such that the slope is 0. Well, could my slope be 0 somewhere between there? Like that. Could it? Yeah. What if my function looked like this? Woo! Could it have a slope of 0? Does it have to have a slope of 0? No, so it said, which one of these um, could be false? I feel like that could be false. Let's go see what C is saying. Uh, answer C is saying, if F of C, this is just F of C is fancy for Y. Would my Y have to be three at some point? Yes. Yeah. What theorem? IVT. IVT, intermediate, intermediate value theorem again. That one has to be true. My y would have to be 3 at some point, no matter what my function looks like. And then what about this one? My slope would have to be 3. Where are we getting a slope of 3 from? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me do it real fast. Uh, let, me, let me do D real fast, and then I'll come back to that. Uh, my slope would have to be 3. Say that again, Key. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you said it. Guys, how would I find my average slope here? What minus what over what minus what? Yeah, over? One plus two. Yeah, wouldn't that give me nine over three, which is three? Because they said it was continuous and differentiable, the average slope is here. There would be at least some other point that has that same slope of three. So that one's going to be the mean value theorem, so I'm digging that one. Let's go back to this. So um, would my y value have to be three? If, Margie, my y value started at negative five and they went all the way up to four, at some point, my y would have to be 3, even if my graph looked like this. Like, woo! Don't I still have to equal 3 to get up there? Yeah. yeah. But they said, hey, we're pumping gas into a gas tank, and they gave us a differentiable function f. Does that mean that f is also continuous? Yes. Yeah. And it says, must there be a value between 60 and 120 such that my slope is 0? Let's go find my slope. What would be my slope there? 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 over 120 minus 60. I don't care which order you do because you're still going to get 0 over something, which is 0. Does the mean value theorem apply here? Yeah, because my function was differentiable. So we're going to say yes. Because what was my function they called f of t? is differentiable. It is also continuous. And mean value theorem applies. There must 
be AC for, and I give that range again. C is going to be between 60 and 120, such that F prime of C is zero. I got all those words. I just copied it straight from here. I copied it, and they love that. They're also going to give you a point for showing this math off to the side. So this would be a two-pointer. This might even be a three-pointer. One point, stating the mean value theorem and that why we can apply it and that, that um, statement there. 